It looks real. I'm liking it. What is that? How you doing? Wow. I like it. I'll get your makeup done in the meantime. Yeah. You're asking me how I keep up with technology? You can't. Even if you read 50 magazines a month, you can't. But let me give you one great secret about technology. It never matters about the past. It's all about the future. When you finally find a time that you're excited about something that technology can do for you, you forget about all the ways it used to work before and just go forward. And that's what people find, is when they really start to get excited about it, it's a pretty easy path. It's all about the future. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. You know, people really get a laugh out of this when I tell them that I'm not a really gadget-oriented person. I think I'm someone who understands technology enough to be safe with it. I think for many people, before they really understand what technology is, they think they've got to have everything and try everything and buy it all. And then they go through a period of saying, OK, I don't need that now. And I think one thing that people can really learn about technology is the more you understand it, the less you think you need all these things when you don't really need them. So I'd say I'm in that position where I know a lot of it, so therefore I don't need a lot of the things. Um, the office just called, but there's no message. So do you want to make call about him? Cool. How are you doing? Good. I haven't talked to you forever. I know. Um, but here's why I want you on these. Because in many cases, they're going to yeah. tie you. Yeah, and can you please run Mike through some basics on that watch? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, what's your touch set up on this one? Ready? Yeah. Let's uh, get that stay in. And I think everyone knows GPS is free. I totally disagree. I don't think people really understand that GPS signals are free. They're so used to paying for cable and satellite. You know, back in the 1960s, the U.S. government did something that most people were unaware of. Well, for that matter, the U.S. government does a lot that people are unaware of, but they sent 29 satellites up into space with the sole purpose of reporting their position in space. These hover in a geostationary orbit, meaning relative to your position on Earth. All 29 are in the same place. They radiate time code down. The purpose of this, locating your position on Earth. The government wanted to map every square inch of the Earth so they wouldn't have to use maps that were a highly inaccurate way of doing it. Well, today, GPS or global positioning devices are way down in price such that everyone can own them. And there are a lot of benefits to this, especially if you like the great outdoors. Well, you might be familiar with those devices in cars or rental cars. This one here is from Magellan. It's called the Explorers 300, and it's made specifically for hikers. So not only can you track exactly where you're hiking, mm -hmm. it also has some safety features built in, things like an altimeter, barometer, and even a compass as well. The nice thing about the barometer, it's a good indication of where the weather is going. If you're out on a hike and you start to see some radical changes, you can know it's time to find shelter. And I had a friend of mine that went out on a trip for seven days. The first six, he just went anywhere he wanted to go, up hills, down valleys, in rivers, in caves. When it was time to return home, he just simply hit a return path, and the GPS device took him all the way back home safely. You can have a lot of fun with these things. I found this one pretty intuitive. Usually I don't like using these devices because they're pretty complicated. This one here, if you can basically use Windows or a, or a computer, it's got the same type of interface. You can see here it even has an escape key, which I love, so you can always get back out of the menus. And simply by hitting the menu key here, I've got all the different functions. I can track all of my different routes. I can even go down to the weather here. As we're talking about the barometer and the, the compass and what have you here. You can see I've got a, a digital readout here of what the temperature is barometer and even the altimeter, like how high up I am. Yeah, and I agree. These ones are really intuitive. So bottom line, they are low cost, about the $250 price range in this. They're rugged. This one can be submersed in water for up to half an hour. If you fell in, you'd probably be dead yourself. But the GPS would still be working, telling people or letting them see where you fell in the water. This, anyway. one, this one even has eight megabytes of memory, so it can store the entire map of North America or Europe, yeah. for that matter. A great thing to work with if you're traveling in the outdoors. Reasonable price. And remember, you pay nothing for those signals. It's not like cable, and it's not like satellite. Satellite. This is free information available to you for when you're out and having some fun. Now, this is a wrist watch based GPS, very similar to the, uh, the handheld ones. It's got all the functionality, 
But this is nice because you can actually just strap it on your wrist. So not only can I track all my navigation points as I'm going along, but it also has the built-in electronic compass, barometer, and mm -hmm. altimeter as well. And again, the way GPS is working, it is receiving up to four signals from the satellites using triangulation, which is the same way a boat navigation person would do it with the, the towers or the beacons, and it can locate your position. It's usually accurate within a couple meters, but when you're out hiking around or traveling, that's plenty close enough. There are advanced systems and a lot more expensive that will pinpoint you with perfect accuracy, but you know, I've used these many times, and they are perfect when you're out and about traveling. This model is called the Sunto X9 wrist top computer, and uh, it's actually got a great little PC interface here as well. So when you get back home, you can actually upload all the information. Uh, as far as the maps and things like that, you can bring in your own maps and then track where you've gone. You can even get a visual representation of your, uh, your height and as well. And this is, this is pretty cool because the online community of Sunto uh, on their website allows you to upload a lot of this information, so specific trips and hikes and pictures and little day journal things create a community. And in fact, you know, when you're out hiking around and you want to go to a certain area, maybe someone's already done this in a really exciting way and there's a lot more information. So it's not only about the GPS, but now it's also about communities as well, too. This would almost be a good watch for training because yep. it's got all the regular watch features like stopwatch. You yep. can even see how fast you're going the distance. And again, having that PC interface there, you've got total control of your training. Now, we're talking about $700 price range for this, so they're not cheap, but there's a lot of value. If you're outdoors, if you're doing a lot of training, you want to know a lot about weather conditions and have all that information automatically being tracked to your watch, check this one out. Very nice. 150. Good. All right, one down. Woo. What time is it? I love doing the TV show. I also have a radio show as well every Saturday afternoon. It's at 2 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time. You can go to www.cknw.com if you want to listen in as well. And it's a call-in show, interactive. Uh, I love doing it because I actually get to hear what people are having problems with as far as technology. And that helps me uh, make uh, a better TV show as well because I know what's going to be working and what's not working out in the real world. Is wireless going to continue to evolve? Oh my God. They say in the next eight years, the sum total of all the knowledge on the planet Earth is going to double. Wireless is going to be caught up in that. In fact, we're going to see base stations that currently go from uh, 100 to say 200 feet going to 30 miles right off your desktop computer. You can always tell a good uh, show by the uh, the food table here, the fruit platter here for the, the, the healthy people. But here, this is good. I got like little potatoes, I got some French toast here. Oh, look at this, huh? Yeah, mmm, 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 do we go and hang out in computer stores when we're not doing a TV show? No, I mean, we've, you know, we're normal people and we like to do our own things. Can we get going on this? Okay, I'm just prepping. I'm him. just trying to find prepping. my motivation. Yeah, he's not in his, he hasn't got his motivation here yet. Okay. Okay. Go. We gotta get rolling. Let's get rolling, guys. All right, everyone else, stay still, quiet on set, close the doors. And mark it. And in three, two, and one. Well, I think I travel too much. And one of my big problems is all the, the tech gadgets that I have with me. They're literally spilling out of my pockets. My cell phone, my Palm Pilot, my MP3 player. Well, backpack manufacturers are starting to address this problem. This is a new one from Targus called the Targus Port 3.1 Notebook Backpack. You know it's technology related when they start giving it version numbers. But this carries all of my tech tools when I'm out on the road. So I'm the ultimate road warrior. It's big enough for a laptop that has a 15 inch screen. You can see inside here plenty of room not only for the laptop but all of my papers and books as I'm traveling. And what I like is the cushioning system. I've actually taken this out here. And instead of just regular foam, this is actually using an air cushioning, a vented air cushioning system and high density foam. It surrounds the notebook computer so it actually floats inside the bag. It actually gives you five times the protection over regular foam. So on top of the notebook, I can also carry my cell phone. It's got a little removable cell phone holder here on the back, so I can keep that handy at all times. And for my MP3 player, my iPod, check this out here. I've got my iPod inside this little pocket here, and it's got a little hole out for the headphones as well, so I can listen to my music as I'm traveling around. You can also hook up a, a water bottle to this. 
And you can see right on the front here as well, I've got plenty of room for all my pens, paper, CDs, uh, what have you. And to keep your valuable notebook and gadgets off the ground, it's got special shock absorbing feet as well. So while you're traveling, why not stay organized and keep all of your tech tools in one bag? Have a look at the new Targus backpack. And, uh, Good job. You know, in the world of computers, theft is big time business. There's a black market. Say with a notebook computer, you can get 70, 80 cents on the dollar. It's not if your notebook computer is going to get stolen or lost, it's when. So wherever you got it, lock it down and keep your eye on it all the time, or before you know it, it's going to be gone. The number one thing stolen around technology is notebook computers. I like computers, but I, I, I like the gadgets. I like things that are hybrids. Like I like the idea of like, you know, smartphones. That's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, any kind of wireless device that does something intelligent. I mean, a Bluetooth air set, which I finally started using, um, you know, after all these years, has, has really increased my productivity. I like it. It looks kind of geeky to put it in. Where's that? Yeah, have it right here. But you might want to say that traditionally you get 150 feet. Yeah, the blue one's more important. <laughs> Two steps back, and I saw the full picture of what was about to happen. This is my moment. As soon as Mike, as soon as Mike stops, you ready? Yeah. Let's uh, get that smart. Oh. And you know, I think we all have epiphanies from time to time. Those things that happen in our life that change our entire frame or way of thinking about something. Mine happened with digital cameras just a couple of years ago, even though I've been using them for a long time. I was up in a meadow with my young daughter, took a picture of her running through it, one of the classic shots, brought it back, put it on my computer, and went, wow. It's kind of like it. a Heidi moment. Yeah, and I'm out, of photo I'm out of film from that point forward and changed ever since. You know, there's a lot of great new cameras on the market that are so small, so convenient, and can do so many things that you can take them with you. This one by Olympus, we want to take a look at here, really is something that you need to have with you if you're out and about. This is part of their stylus line. You might be familiar with this because they've had this line out for years in the film cameras. Now they've gone digital. And this one's nice. You can see very sleek and very small. So it's great if you're out uh, in the outdoors or on a vacation. You can stick this right in your pocket and get great pictures. I anytime. think that's a big part of it, getting a camera that can stay with you really easy. This one here is a four megapixel camera. It's also got a two times optical zoom and a four times digital zoom. So you can be able to get great prints whether you're doing four by sixes or right up to eight by ten. And remember with a four megapixel image you are going to be able to blow this up to eight and a half by eleven and get a great shot. Now this one also has 16 built-in modes which means when you're out in an action shot or overcast sort of conditions or moving or tight shot you don't have to set all the features. The camera does it for you really easy to use on the back. This one's nice because it's got a little scroll wheel here so you can go through the different modes whether you're going to take a still picture. Even has a quick time movie mode so you can take little video well, Those are kind of handy little well. snippets, yeah. Yeah, great for emailing out and also playing back the images. This one's also got a fast image processor inside, so if you're going to be scrolling through the different pictures, it goes super fast. And also, what I like when you're taking pictures, you might have noticed this with older digital cameras. You take the picture and then you have yeah. to wait a few seconds again. This one here, you can just keep snapping away. And, and one other thing, if you're not totally into wanting to use the computer with it, this has PicBridge, the technology that allows you to hook it directly to a printer that is PicBridge compatible, so no computer in between, your pictures can come out right away. I recommend now that you get into a digital camera, take a look at some of the latest offerings. They'll change your life. Now, if you are spending more time outdoors and going to take your digital camera with you, you want to make sure you get one that is at least water resistant. Although a friend of mine had one water resistant, dropped it in the lake, fished it out, and it still worked. You don't want to dive with a camera like that. I want to show you something exciting here. This is a, a, a camera out of the U.S. right now called by DXG. It's only around $150 U.S. It's a 3.3 megapixel, lots of features, but it also includes the underwater case. Now, with many manufacturers, this case could be two to $300. Just for the case alone. Just for the case alone. Snap this inside. Now, this is great if you're into kayaking, windsurfing, skiing, any high adventure. This is a little bit of a buffer for the case. Gives you access to all the buttons on the outside. You can still see the uh, viewfinder in the back, and it's got an eyepiece in there that allows you to sync up with it. And it takes great shots underwater. So you don't have to invest a ton of money. This is a way to get a good camera. But again, I'm shocked that they included the case with this one, too. Super cheap. And again, if you look at these plastic housings for other cameras, they can range anywhere from three to $500 
just for the case alone. This camera here has got a uh, built-in 16 megabyte uh, memory card, but it does take the SD card so that you can upgrade and Right, get and those more are pictures. the very, very small memory cards, and those cards are available all over the place. So the idea here is camera that can be used on land, take it with you. We've got our uh, fish tank with our little friend Pixel swimming around in there. Why don't we uh, do the test and make sure that it, it does work? And let's hope it floats too. I think cell phones are going to really morph into the small computer. You know, in a digital world, everything can do everything. The only things we need a device to do is allow us to hear it and allow us to see it. The processing inside is all done the same. So a notebook computer, desktop computer, PDA, cell phone, as you can see, they're really all the same device shrinking down. So if you ask me what a cell phone's gonna do in the future, everything. Mike's a great guy, we have a lot of fun. We've been working together for 10 years. But he's one of those guys, you know, that never reads the manual. I don't read them that often myself, but one show, we had the Segway on. We've got the Segway guy there, and he's guarding this $15,000 machine like it's his little baby. And Mike hops on, he gets Mike off, and says, I gotta train you. Mike's going, no, I'm fine. It just take me a minute to drive this thing around here. And the guy's going, okay. And Mike hops on, and what do you know? Within like 20 seconds, he's crashing into everything. You should have seen the look on the guy's face. You know, if I was a kid and you asked me about what technology would be great, I'd probably be saying something like a, a new game or something. But being a parent with kids, where I think the new technology is really playing off is new devices with GPS built into them. There's watches that'll show a kid's position and report if any sort of incident occurs, send you a message right to your cell phone, or allow you to communicate directly with the watch. <laughs> In Mexico, for example, in high-risk areas, they're even putting tiny little chips inside of the kids so if there was an attempt to smuggle them across the border, they could be stopped and identified on their way across. And I guess for me, too, one thing I really liked as a kid was walkie-talkie radios, but the range never went anywhere, and it was all staticky and crumbly. But those are changing. We're getting so much better when it comes to radios. Maybe if you're, like, jumping. That would be really cool. I'll try. I'll see it again. You might remember a couple years ago a big buzz in the marketplace when a new generation of walkie talkies came in. Motorola released the first. They were on the FRS, or Family Radio Service, meaning you didn't need a license to operate. Started around $500. That's what I paid. <laughs> Dropped down to about $50. Such is technology. Big buzz again, though, because there's a new generation called the GMRS, which is for General Mobile Radio Service. See, I programmed Mike for that one. This is a band in the U.S. that requires a license, but in Canada, the license requirements have been moved. So it means the radios are up to four or more times powerful, whereas the old ones went around two kilometers. These can go from eight to 12 kilometers, depending on the model. These ones here are around $120 for the set. They really work well, as I said, no license required now for these. Well, these are cool. They come with a little uh, battery charging station here that you can put both of them in and charge at the same time. You can even take the batteries out and charge them separately as well. But uh, as you're saying, up to eight kilometers, which is really cool. Maybe I'll go back 20 feet and test this out. Even has things like a vibra call, kind of like cell phones, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to make lots of noise when people are calling. And channel scan to go through all the different channels. And if you still want to talk with your friends that have an FRS radio, of those 22 channels that GMRS supports, it actually will support up to seven of the FRS. Let's see. Dave, can you hear me? No, where are you, Mike? <laughs> Lost in the woods? I'm sure they'll find you pretty quickly with a light flashing like this. You know, technology has brought us a lot of things. Who would have thought it would have brought us the next generation of flashlights? You found your way back? I did, without the flashlight's help. These are LED flashlights, light-emitting diodes, solid-state circuitry that has a few amazing properties. One, it is simply two types of metal when electricity passes through it that tends to glow. We've had light-emitting diodes around for years. We had the red. A few years ago, we came out with the blue, which we saw in the Christmas lights, and only recently we've got the white. And that's the big turning point for these because the power consumption, the brightness, and everything blow out a regular filament bulb, and you never have to replace them. They last for hundreds of thousands of hours. The two of them here by this company, Dorsey, 
this one, which Mike has right there, which had the pulsing light on it. It's got a special LED, which is about 10 times brighter. You can see it just runs on a couple of AAA batteries, but you get about 30 hours of continuous life. And that's one of the great things about LEDs is the light bulbs don't burn out and they don't learn, burn a lot of power, and they're bright. This one's super cool. Shine that in your eye. <laughs> I'm blind myself. It's got over a hundred foot range yeah. on that particular beam. So yeah, you're, you're right as far as the super Bradley from our crew um, used this the other day. And, uh, it's great. I, I use this to track down squirrels because once they get involved with the hypnotic kind of <laughs> pulsing there, then it's really super yep. easy like, to, grab them them. Yeah, to grab them. This one, I don't know if you're going to see this in there, it's got three different levels. There's one bulb in the middle, then it brings on four more around the edge and then pops back on the middle sort of for five levels. This one is a little bit less because it doesn't have quite the intensity. But, you know, something we don't think about, it's great to have a flashlight in an emergency. And if you've ever been thinking about needing one, get one with an LED bulb because you're more than likely it's going to be ready to go when you need it. My little squirrel. Camping and I don't get along so well. I'm more of a hotel guy. But i got to be honest, when I have gone camping with the kids, I, I bring a DVD player, you know, or my laptop, just to keep the kids entertained while we're out roughing it. You know, like anything, life is all about balance. Even before we had technology, we had to keep everything in balance. For me, technology means making my life simpler, doing the things I want to do, when I want to do them, and then keep the technology out of the way. A previous television show I did was all about me sitting on the farm and showing that you don't have to have all this technology in your face. A perfect day for me is getting up, enjoying it, using email, using a cell phone or any other device to get me through that day as efficient as possible and then enjoying the rest of that day with my family. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. <laughs> However, now with the you know, I all I... <laughs> his knob is turning. <laughs> oh, those were crazy times back in the old days. You know, I think we're finally starting to see a, a great trend change. You know, I think Dave, I need you to play as far back. That's the late night version of the opening. <laughs>